and yes. Okay. So, question. Are you being served? Actually, this is going to be about two-way street. In fact, I really realize it's four, so <laughs> I've already changed my title. Anyway, let me start with who I am and get into the topic. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. In case you're wondering, it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time every single day. And today's at number 415 in an ongoing series of talks that seems to be endless, which I'm kind of enjoying. And the topic today is, are you being served? And I put in subtitle, it's a two-way street. And I'm going to speak to this from more of a... Actually, I'm not sure I'm going to speak about this. I'm going to speak about it, period. But let's get into, let's get into the topic. So, first of all, this is not about the five love languages. And I'll do a quick recap of that in case you're not sure what that is. Um, the five love languages is a best-selling book by uh, Gary Chapman. And in that book, there are five different love languages he recommends, which I can list off the top of my head pretty quickly, are uh, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service, which I'm going to get to, but it's not that in this context. <laughs> um, gifts and words of affirmation. No, qual yeah, quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts. Five, yes. Make sure I get all five in my head because you know I'm teaching this stuff. Um, but I'm not talking about that, in fact, because are you being served? I mean it from the point of view of being a, a giver to the other person, which is not based upon that love language. Because some people think, well, my love language is physical touch. If you, sorry, let me pick back up a second. If you're a devotee of the book, The Five Love Languages, then perhaps you feel a certain um, allegiance to one of the values, which may not be acts of service, and thinking that I don't need to serve. Not true. I'm speaking as a um, higher level of commitment to a relationship, which is to serve each other. And also, about serving together. So I'm going to break that down a bit more for you in a moment. I'm just, realizing, I'm just reviewing what I've talked about this last week, and this is probably the lightest. <laughs> this is going to be one of the most lighthearted and easy talks I've done the last few days. They've been pretty deep for a while, so maybe it's time to come up for air and do a different conversation. So, are you being served? First of all, and this is why I'm at the four-way piece of this, are you serving each other? Which is kind of an important piece. But the second part of that, which is maybe more important, is are you serving yourself? And I mean this from the point of view of taking care of yourself. I mean this from the point of view of being a um, loving person towards yourself and to the other person. And being a service means things like helping them out with things. It means holding a vision for them. It's also about how you hold them in your heart. Now if you're single, you can practice this on yourself, certainly and you practice on those you love around you, whether it be siblings, friends, etc. It doesn't have to be a primary relationship. But if you're in a relationship, this will add a, a dimension and depth to your relationship that maybe you haven't seen before. And frankly, um, it could change your relationship, to be blunt about, to be serious about it. Um, sorry, I'm checking something here. All right. Um, so, serving each other, serving yourself, and your partner serving themselves and serving out the world. And I mean, I talked about this actually, it's, it's chap this is one of the chapters in the book. I, it's, it's one of the first 10 chapters in a book. I don't remember which one it is, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it here. But in this book, sorry, in this focus of my work, it's a reminder for us to get out of our own way and to get out of our own stuff. Because when you're serving, when you're out there doing something that's actually from overflow, it's much easier to get out of your head against acts of service from your heart and the the trick of this the master plan of this is to shift your energy see when you're serving because you're out doing service in the world but also when you're doing things that are service oriented towards your partner it removes the mental chatter of well <laughs> it should remove the mental chatter let me let me break one piece down if you're feeling that your partner doesn't deserve you to be of service to them, then you've got some stuff to work on. And in fact, it might be a reason why you should do something of service to your partner, because it may encourage them to do the same for you. There's an old adage about, if you want something, give it away. 
and in the relationship conversation, for example, if you wanted to get a, a massage from your partner, give them a massage and maybe get one reciprocal. That doesn't always 100% work, just to be <laughs> transparent, but it is a piece of the work that I think is very vital because for me, it's a reminder that in the action of being of service, we fuel ourselves, we fill ourselves up. It's actually a very um, nifty, I don't know if it's the right word, but it's a very powerful tool to use. So my intention with this reminder, and it's a light one, I know, I said I've had some pretty deep conversations a lot, or deep Facebook Lives the last four or five days, and I, if you want to go deep, please go watch them. But today, I just was playing something, I wanted to do something lighter because I had some other topics brewing. I went, it's a weekend, it's Saturday, hence the casual attire, hence being out on the deck, um, that I wanted to do something a little bit less um, deep, perhaps. But the thing about this is it can go deep if you're really putting yourself in a place where you're serving in a way that is uplifting to yourself and other people. Now, the piece I mentioned, I dropped in earlier about serving together, this actually is a good way to meet somebody. So if you're single, listen up. <laughs> First of all, talk about couples, then I'll talk about how you be of singles. When you're a couple, if you do service projects out in the world to make a difference, maybe it's working with animals, maybe it's working with homeless, maybe it's working in construction with Habitat, Habitat for Humanity, whatever it is, when you do something together in a service, serving is actually a powerful way to open your heart. So when you're with your partner and you do it together, it can create more, more um, connection, more intimacy, more loving for each other, which is an awesome skill to have. So it's a sneaky way to get there, but it's also a powerful way to do it because you're making a difference out there as well as inside. Double win, or win-win as they say. If you're single, I've talked about this before about how, besides not necessarily being a fan of the apps, the dating apps and such, which are okay to a degree, especially when you know what you want up front, and I've got a whole different talk about how you want to start, ladies in particular, start with what you want inside before you go on the dating apps, and I, I can help you with that, and I do help you with that. Um, but what I also mentioned is that if you want to actually attract a relationship, and you want to find somebody who meets you where you are, do the activities, the exercises, the things that actually fuel you and actually will um, put you in the place where you love being. So, if, for example, if you happen to love dancing, go, if you go out to dancing places, you might be somebody who dances and that becomes a common place to meet. Service is the same way. If you feel that one of your things that lights you up, that makes you feel more whole, that makes you feel more loving, is to go and do something serving with a homeless or in a hospital or somewhere else where you feel like it's, it uplifts you, go do that. Because the action of doing that, the actual intention of getting out there and serving, First of all, puts you in the place where you're in your joy, which makes you more noticeable and attractive. Yes, it does. Secondly, you tend to meet other people who are attracted to the same idea as well. Now, if you do something in service where it's one person doing one thing out in the wilderness, it may not work so much. But if you do something that's in, in where you live, in your, in your community, in your city, where you do something that you value doing, you might find yourself meeting people who have the same value system as you, including eligible singles. Oh, what an idea. So, service, has an interesting way to get you where you want to go, even though you didn't plan on it in the first place. Now, I'm not saying go out there looking for somebody just to go, go so many places, although you could do that. What I'm saying is <laughs> get out there and serve. To serve yourself, to serve in the world. And one caveat I want to put in there, by the way. A lesson I learned a long time ago that I'm still learning at times from a seminar I took back in 1984, so it goes back a bit. One of the fundamental grind rules was take care of yourself first and then take care of others. And it was key that it was take care of yourself first, comma, then take care of others. So when talking about being of service to your partner or to, your, to um, out in the world, in partnership or being single, it's only um, if, um, let's say this, it's not so effective if you're not taking care of yourself first. So when you go out to serve in the community, make a difference, it can be a way of lifting your spirits, which if you have spirits down can help you with that. But also at the same time, you don't want to do it where it's stressing you. So when you are in a place where you can give from that place of service, overflow, unattachment, um, from compassion and caring, then go for it. But if you're going to go out and serve because you think you must do it and it's, dry and it's, it's hard work and it's stressful, say no. And I actually had that experience recently with a place where I was being... Um, feeling like I was, I was doing out of duty, not out of joy. So I said no. A lesson that I recommend you learn because frankly, 
camera, Chad, just to reflect on that for a second. Frankly, it's a lesson, le a life lesson that I'm still learning on many different levels, and I trust you may have the understanding of this yourself. So that's under the volunteering category, by the way. Not going to get into here. Okay, back on track. So serving by choosing to give from place of care, compassion, love, kindness, you will exude and exhibit those qualities to those around you, which makes you more attractive. If you're single, it makes you more noticeable to other singles. And certainly if you're in a relationship, it will add to the attraction to your new partner. So those are vital pieces. Now to back up to the beginning, so I skipped that a bit recently, earlier on. Are you being served in the relationship means are you able to give to your partner from a place of, of overflow and abundance, as I mentioned before, giving from an overflow when you're okay to do so versus from a place of stress or neediness. If you give from your overflow in a relationship to your partner and you give to each other, and it can be with the laundry, it could be in the bedroom, I mean, it could be, it, it's, it, I'm leaving the idea is what you do for service up to you, that's your assignment. <laughs> And when you are able to serve and be served in a relationship, it's, an, it's a, um, a lubricant for flow and communication and connection, as I was trying to say. So it's a powerful tool to use in your relationships. And I would say actually do this in every relationship, not just in your primary one. Do it with family members, do it with co-workers, do it with friends. Because if this is something you want to explore, your homework is to try this out, to explore this, to experiment with this. and to really get clear about what it is you can give. If you get this and you do this, it will change your life. If you're already doing it, you already know it will change your life, because it already has. It's a lesson I keep learning and sharing, and so I want to drop this out today, um, because it was time to do one of these talks. So, um, I think there's anything else on this. I think that's everything, at least for this talk. Second, just rescanning, serving each other. So, let me add a PS to this. Are you being served is also about are you taking care of yourself? As I mentioned, one of the grand rules I learned about taking care of yourself first and take care of others. If you're not taking care of yourself and you're sacrificing yourself for the rest of your family, for example, kids, husband, wife, what your relationship is, you're going to burn out. So, serving yourself by taking care of yourself being a service to your own self-support. Self-care is a must, a priority, and a first step towards loving other people. Yes, loving yourself first to love other people is the way it works. So if you've not been doing that, that's also your homework. You start doing more of self-care, self-compassion, and self-support every day. So go do it. <laughs> um, I think I'm done with this topic. So I'm going to give you some quick summary information and an invitation as well, so you know what I'm doing. Um, if you've been watching my broadcast, you know that I do this on Facebook Live. If you don't, now you do. Um, the, then go on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. I then repurpose them and put them onto YouTube, so you can watch them on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Message from the Masculine. And now they're also being repurposed to go out as an audio for those people who want to listen to me in their cars or when you're getting, going out in the, in the world where you need to be able to focus on where you're going but you want to listen to hear my talks. Which if you do, wonderful, thank you. Um, if you go to iTunes and look for Messages from the Mask and you'll see my, my um, podcast and you can sign up for that. You can um, subscribe to it, that's the word, subscribe to it and download this and listen to it at your leisure. There's a lot less there than there are of my videos because I've got to spend a lot of time converting them because I'm uploading them there as well. Finally, if you're someone who's stuck in the area of relationship where you don't have what you want and you want to get clear about your direction, your intention, and your desires for relationship, I invite you to take advantage of my time. I offer as my gift a um, complimentary clarity conversation, also known as a discovery session. If you choose to, and I do invite you to take a serious look at that, on my website, which is barrysilver.com, you can peruse all my stuff there. On my website, there is a menu, of course, websites have menus. Left hand side says let's chat. Click on that, sign up, fill out the form, schedule a time, and let's talk. And I hope you get where you want to go. That's my gift, my service, and my invitation to you. With that, have a great Saturday. I'm signing off because I'm going to go do some other things. Um, you've got your homework assignments. And with that, I think I will be done. Um, 
I will be back in tomorrow, same time. Yes, so thanks for being with me. Thanks for watching, as always. And I will see you again tomorrow. All right? So take care of yourselves. Bye.